So first, I'm going to introduce myself. So I've been in Debian for seven years. I have been the maintainer of the packages into the Debian archive and Ubuntu for the last three years. I've got uh, commit uh, permission on the LLVM project, and I've been organizing the LLVM uh, European conference. So I'm, I am in both worlds. So I won't explain what is Debian. I guess you all know what it is. So, but currently in Debian and Ubuntu, we are using GCC for everything. That means for every packages and for every architecture and for every kernel that we've got. And GCC, as you probably all know, is, has been the default compiler for the last 25 years, and we are using it for basically HPC to embedded devices. So why do we need a new compiler in Debian? So it was one of the questions that we answered this morning. Uh, first, from my point of view, it is in Debian we used to have only the Linux kernel, now we have two other kernels. I agree that nobody is using them, it is just a proof of concept, some people enjoy that, but everybody is running Linux. But we have been able to decouple uh, the Linux kernel from the Debian distribution. So I would like to do the same with GCC. So first, some advantages with Clang, is that it detects more error and warnings than GCC. Uh, the more different compiler you use to uh, compile your software will improve the quality of your code because it will detect more error and it will find bugs and so on. Even with Visual Studio, you can find bugs that the GCC is not able to find. Uh, the folk at ARM say that uh, Clang is better than GCC on their architecture. And now a big ecosystem is being built over LLVM and Clang. The next talk will, will be about scan build, but there is also plenty of tools. So for example, I, I just uploaded into the archive a package code include what you use, you run that on the C code, and it will tell you which either files are useless and which one should be removed and which one should be added. So Alan Vellum and Clang. So here is a quick slide about performances that have been uh, shown by the Google folks at the Euro LLVM, the Euro LLVM conference. Uh, they don't explain how they get this number. They just say that uh, Clang compared to GCC it's about 4% slower on server. Uh, image processing is 3% and uh, vid video codec are exactly the same performances. They explain that the video codec is exactly the same performances because they are using a lot of assembly code. For libraries, OpenSSL is exactly the same performance. Uh, protocol buffer is 12% slower and Snappy is only 5% slower. So the performances are pretty good. And as you, can, as you probably know, a lot of people and a lot of big corporations are involved into Clang, so you can hope that the performances will be pretty much the same in one year, and they are getting better and better year after year. So here is one example of basic C code that GCC, even with dash w all, uh, is not able to detect. So he, here is a very trivial example. We have an unsigned, and we check that it is under zero. So Clang is able to detect that and to return uh, an error, a warning, actually. And warning for that is often extremely, extremely annoying. <laughs> uh, what happens is people have macros to do bounce checking. Yeah. So it's very common to check that something is between two values, mm. and that will hit exactly that. And if the compiler warns about it, it's going to cause huge problems because then people rewrite it without the bounce checking and suddenly you have security bugs and all other kinds of crap. So I would say more intelligent detections. That warning is fine if the compiler is really intelligent. I seriously doubt it is, in which case that warning is usually stupid as fuck. I mean, seriously. <laughs> we actually have it turned off in the kernel because... Uh, I, you folk at LLVM Linux, are you uncommenting this warning or? Well, we, we basically listen to the kernel community and that's the general feeling, so we've actually turned it off for that. Okay. Be because of, of comments yeah, like that, we've turned it off. Okay, because so because there's a lot of places that happens in the kernel. Okay. Otherwise. Thanks. So now I'm going to present the result of uh, the rebuild of Debian using Clang. So it's a very crappy method that I'm doing. Basically, uh, since Clang is accepting the same argument as GCC, I'm going into USR bin and removing the GCC and creating Simlink to Clang. It is very dirty, but it works. 
uh, I tried to use this command on the bottom right uh, by providing cc and cxx, but I, I noticed that about 40% of the packages uh, do not respect such declaration. So it is bug in upstream, but it is a huge task to fix half of the Debian packages. So I'm not, for now, I'm only testing the, if the package is rebuilt. I'm not testing the performances. I'm not testing the quality of the binary. I, most of the time, I don't know if there is any miscompilation. I'm just testing if I can rebuild the package. So uh, the results are produced on clang.debian.net. Uh, we are using the Amazon Cloud to do the rebuild with something like 50 huge computer. It takes about eight hours. And I received the help of two Debian developers on that. So here is what we've got. So with the first version, which is about three, year, three years old, we have about, uh, we had 15% of packages failing. We have a decreasing here in the 3.0. That means that they fix most of the ceiling bank bugs. And here they introduce more warning. And I will explain a bit more after that where they are coming from. Uh, so now in the current Debian archive, we have more than 2,000 package failing, which is a lot, I agree. But I will show why we have such high number in the archive. So that's basically 11%. Uh, so the first one, which is a very bad idea to use both at the same time. Usually, I think we should even in Debian forbid the usage of dash w error. Because most of the time, uh, you develop with one compiler, but you forget that there is other compiler in the world. And if you are using this option, it will fail on other compiler, which is exactly the case in, uh, in Clang. So basically, a lot of build failures that we are getting are because of that. So for people who are not familiar, dash w enable a lot of warning, and dash w error transforms the warning into error. So. Uh, Let's take this crappy example again. Here, I'm using dash w all with dash w error. I get an error while I should only get a warning. So the big increase of the, of the big failure between the uh, 3.0 and 3.1 is due to things like this one, which is a security check that the C-Lang developer added. So here, they consider that it is a security issue to display a warning, but since many upstream are using dash w error, it fails the build here. So some of the common errors. So this one is my favorite. Some folks think that uh, using a dash 09 or dash 020 will really improve the performance of your software. <laughs> so we get that a lot. We have about 50 packages in the archive who are doing that. And I'm very happy to provide patches to them because it's a very trivial change to in the source code. Uh, the, the record is a uh, lib uh, DBI driver with dash 020. So I don't know what they expect, but uh, Clang is considering that as an error. So maybe we should change that in Clang to make it a warning. Because it's a waste of time for everybody and it's not really worth it failing the build just for that. But anyway. Uh, this one is a very nice piece of code. As you can see on the left. So we define a function which is expecting an int and we return garbage, nothing. Uh, GCC is not showing anything by default. It is showing it when you are using dash w all, and Clang considers that as an error. Uh, we have this 120 times in the archive, in the Debian archive, at least 120 packages as that in the archive, which is really crappy code. Uh, you can, hopefully it is hidden, maybe it is hidden in the base code of the software. I hope we don't have that in public libraries. This is just to answer to Linus at this presentation. The user land is very crappy, and it is the kind of thing that we see all the time in the Debian archive. Uh, this one is the opposite. We only have got 16 of them. It's basically, we are expecting a void. We return a value. GCC returns a warning, but he's happy. Clang thinks that it is an error, and it fails the build. And because you asked me this morning to add this, so here is the slide. So we have that, the nested function. We have that 33 time in the archive. Uh, Clang is considering that on the zero. GCC is very happy, so it fails. And the, the package, I don't remember what is the most famous package which is doing that. This, we discussed that this morning. But yeah, and EFL utils also. So it is. It's not very standard packages which are doing that, but some of them are very important for, for every Linux distribution. And we discussed that 
a lot this morning. So it is uh, some GCC uh, extension. So here it is with C++ code. It is a known plain old object which are rejected. So that, that one won't be fixed by claim. Um, so regarding uh, unused return expression, uh, return values of expressions, I have a slight problem in user space RCU where basically I have a, a macro that's an assigned statement yeah. that basically performs a, a, an assignment to a RCU pointers. And I want it to behave like, well, a standard assignment. And the semantic of a normal assignment is that, I mean, there may, I mean the return value of the assignment may be used but, I mean, it's not an error if it is not used. And that's just a macro, but uh, Clang is uh, giving warnings. So you it's are, unclear how to fix that kind of you thing. You are talking about this one or the... Okay. Yeah. But I have that problem in user space, so... Okay, over here too. Um, so just to note with that one, um, that is valid code in C++14. Um, I, I don't really know why somebody would, would do an no, array of vectors, but um, I'm pretty sure that that's not GCC being wrong. I think that's just uh, GCC allowing something that's now in the standard. For C++14? Is that not sure? placed though? Is that not verbal and three in string? Or is it, since it's at the end, it's okay? Is that what you're saying? It's a vector. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, right. That's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. So maybe. Yeah, that's odd. Maybe G implemented something that they are going to put into the next standard. I suspect that's true. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. So, from my point of view, the last rebuild of the Debian archive shows that Clang is now ready. So that means that I haven't found any bugs which is from Clang. I found many upstream bugs, like many, many, many upstream bugs. So they have to be fixed by upstream. So the main question now is how we can fix 2,000 upstream packages. Uh, I've got some time, but I don't want to do that myself. And I would like upstream to fix their crap. It would be nice. So the first thing that we, we did was to uh, develop an interface which will provide automatic rebuild of every Debian package using Clang instead of GCC. So that is automatic and done transparently for any new upload in the archive. So the project is called Debil. Uh, for French speakers, that means stupid. Uh, it used to uh, be called Debil Me. It is done by one crazy American living in Boston, which is called Paul Tagliamonte. And we work with Leo Cavalle during the context of the G Google Summer of Code on that. So here is the, uh, the web interface. So we try to stick to uh, stuff that we already have in Debian. Uh, basically, here we are rebuilding this package. I just took this one because we build everything with this one. We have the version display, who is maintaining the package. And the red does not show very well here. But you can see that we are rebuilding the package here with uh, uh, Clang 3.3 and GCC 4.8. Uh, and we are providing a lot of static analyzer. So that means for every upload in Debian, we are going to rebuild with scan build. With, we are going to run Coxinel on the source code. We are going to run CCP check, Lintian, and many other static analyzer tools like Python check and uh, Perl, whatever, and stuff like that. So we are providing a whole interface for every uh, packages. So the idea behind that is if I am an upstream and I want to get some feedback on my package, the quality of my package, I go on this interface and I will have the log on, of my package built with two compilers and tons of checks. So I will have plenty of things to fix in my code and plenty of bad code and so on. So we are providing the workers. So as I said, we are providing the normal build. So that means the uh, Debian vanilla build package so with GCC. We are doing the scan build in Tian Coxinel, CVP check, and Clang. And we are also providing automatic repository with the package build with Clang. So now the next steps that we are thinking is very important is to test the quality of the binary. We did test the, the, the compilation of the code 
but we haven't tested if the code runs well and if we won't have any uh, weird issue. And we probably will have some. So we could also ask to the GCC people that they could add more checks into their dash w all to make sure that we've got basically the same uh, kind of check which are automatically done by compilation. So that will break many code using GCC, but it will improve the quality of upstream code. Because it's some of the check, like the two first that I show with uh, function expecting an int and function uh, returning values. Uh, if, we can that, if we can get that by default in GCC, it will be great because it will improve the quality of all, uh, all software and especially fix my issue. Oh. I don't know. What was that right. again, sorry? If, 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 GCC is already, if GCC is already not including it in W all, isn't that perhaps for a reason, a lot of false positives? I don't think it is. I don't see any false positive for cases for this kind of code, except for, them. for this one, for example. Especially in traditional C, if yeah. you have old style C that doesn't have void, that is actually very common. Do you, uh, you see a lot of code, old C code still in, in packages? I've, I've seen surprisingly <laughs> bad C code, yeah. <laughs> I've seen code that still tries to remove, yeah, the K and R stuff because it's so, it wants to be so portable. It but still exists. Maybe it's, a, it's one more argument to remove this kind of code now. <laughs> I mean, if you have 18,000 packages, I could imagine that 120 of them actually, yeah. well, a small amount of them actually have this. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, it is in W, but I would enable it by default also. Yeah. I mean, uh, as far as my user space packages are concerned, I mean, yeah, for, for the non-void return value, this one seems all right, but I mean, the uh, non-used non uh, expression, that's one that is bogus in my case. I mean, yeah. I had to do a, just Un a, a dummy use yeah, of the expression. Yeah. It's not yeah. something that I want to, to push. It is this kind of stuff. And the other one is uh, oh, this one. the, the one, uh, comparison of unsigned with zero. Actually, there are some macros that you can do nice stuff about, uh, is this uh, type signed or not? And that, so, but it's a oh, macro that actually used the characteristic of comparing with a zero with an uh, unsigned. So, well. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to push the GCC fork to do exactly the same as Clang. I'm just trying to make the same level of uh, warning enabled by default to make sure that uh, when we are using dash w error, we we have the same behavior at the end. Checking the same things, basically. Yeah. So uh, I would like to discuss about if people have any other idea how we can fix 2,000 packages and uh, making sure that they apply the package upstream, the fix upstream. One thing that would be nice with W error is if it were not an all or nothing option, if you could Set the more, make the more, if, you, if W error weren't an all or nothing option, yeah. if you could make the more serious warnings be errors, but not all of them. Yeah. I, doesn't Google do this with their Python wrapper when they build? I don't know if you've seen they have a Python wrapper, and then the Python wrapper will read the warnings that GCC gave to it, and then the, wrap, the Python wrapper will have extra logic to decide which warnings they're okay with and which ones they're not. Yeah, but here it's not warning, it's this build failure, so uh, this is something harder to fix and I cannot do a wrapping yeah. over it. Yeah, all, okay. all warnings become errors and so it breaks. Yeah. So you can do dash w error equals then the name of the switch and you can also do dash w no error equal dash w no dash error equals and then the name of the switch um, for both GCC and Clang. So it, it's pretty tunable. So it can be done, it's just not being done, it sounds like. One of the things I've done before is take the output from Clang and the, uh, the verbose error reporting and actually automate a patch. So take that, and for trivial cases, if you have a lot of trivial cases, you may mm. just be able to auto-generate patches, and then from those, potentially just upstream those. Yeah. What kind of error are you talking about? Um, these were ones that had uh, segment mismatch errors, so it was finding pr places where um, things were, were not being properly marked for link segments, and then it would add in the appropriate um, attributes to them so that they 
would generate the patch, and then I would go through and just apply all the patches. So a couple of things, I mean, on that note, for, for simple things, you can definitely do, you know, you can, you can enable the fix it mode in Clang. Okay. There, there's a fix it mode in Clang, which will try to do simple things like that. Okay. And that'll, I mean, 2,000 patches is a lot, right? But yeah. it, it might get that yeah, down a yeah. little bit, at least. Um, same idea. So I really think that in many of the cases, the only correct solution is to tell Clang to just shut up. Uh, we used to have this, I mean, GCC actually used to give more warnings for many things. Uh, early in GCC 4, uh, they very aggressively added warnings and added them to W all, uh, and they ended up removing them because they are worthless. One of the examples is the sign compare one, not the one you showed, uh, but comparing an unsigned value against a signed value is often uh, very bug prone. Mm. So you add a warning for that, which sounds very sane on the face of it. And it turns out that warning triggers all the time because um, right, so just con about constant about integers yeah. tend to be signed. And it turns out it's actually fine to compare an unsigned value against five, right? Uh, so quite often the warnings are just bogus. GCC go, went through this, GCC removed the warning from wall. You can still enable it by ma uh, ha manually. And it sounds like LLVM just hasn't gone through that situation where it's being used so much that people speak up and say, hey, people, you're giving warnings for crap. Yeah. So. The main issue that I see with this solution is one of the advertisements that I do with Clang is, oh, you get many warning and many very fancy errors message, and if you, if you disable them, some, the, the argument disappears. Uh, well, that <laughs> yeah, that's true, this one. So for the W error problem, I think there's uh, another solution. Uh, most of us are using some wrapper instead of just a symlink anyway, because for example, for cross-compiling semantics are yeah. somewhat different. Yeah. And we could extend those wrappers to translate dash W error into dash W error, dash W no error yeah. equals, uh, and then a list of the weirdest things. Yeah. And another thing that we really should do is uh, be realistic, there will always be some upstreams that say we don't care and we don't want this, for example, when it comes down to unnesting functions. <laughs> so one thing to do would probably be to set up a central repository where all the distributions that care about this can share their efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the LLVM Linux Git repositories can be reused for this. Absolutely. We, uh, we've got room for, for doing those sorts of things if people want to use it. But for, for the ones that look like a common pattern, uh, Cochinelle's, I have used a little bit, but it, it's, it seems to work pretty well for that. For You can detect and, and uh, produce patches with that. So that's pretty good. Um, for the things that are like ancient, old KNR kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, KNR was great, but we can do better. Uh, and if you clean that code up, I might, for new code, I tend to use uh, minus W error and minus W all invariably and you know clean up all the warnings because a lot of them if, if you do it right they really mean you something interesting that you ought to clean yeah, up uh, so I, I certainly support the idea of trying to clean all this stuff up, up mm. upstream yeah but it's a huge work and most of the stream are not aware that they are other compilers I don't, I don't we are think doing this work with Clang, but some folks might do that with the Intel compiler yeah, I don't Especially think if you... one day they release open source, they release it as open source but I don't see that happening I was going to say, I don't think the argument is that uh, whether or not it should be fixed. I think the, the, uh, the thing is how do we get upstream to fix their own code, essentially? How do we prevent these errors from being issues? Yeah. True enough. True, true enough. Yeah, fair enough. Any other questions? Uh, just out of curiosity, out of all those Debian packages, not all of them will actually invoke a GCC or a G++. So when you listed those counts, um, 
Yeah, I'm including every package, even the one only with Python or Java and so on. Because it, it is very hard to detect which packages will need the C uh, compiler and which one doesn't. So, so yeah, in, actually you're right, the numbers are not correct because I'm including all the Java packages and all the Python and all the Perl, et cetera. They don't have any easy way to uh, skip them. So the percentage is higher, actually. If I was only checking code with C and C++ and Objective-C, the percentage will be way higher than it is currently. But it is easier, because um, when the Phonics guy, for example, are taking the number, I prefer that they're using the, this one, which is, you don't have to explain it too much, this number. Yeah, we run into the same exact thing when we test our compiler, our Clang, is that, like, autoconf, and a lot of these packages don't even invoke. Yeah. And so you're not really getting compiler testing per se. Yeah, but, but sometimes sometime in Java code you are using GNI, so you, it's very hard to detect. You cannot say, okay, I will only text the packages without the dash Java in the package name. You, cannot, you don't know that if they are using GNI or not, and it's the same with Python. If you are using a library in Python, which is a binding of a C library, you will compile C code. So. And the, the packages that you build, you don't install them back into the root file system. If I want. The, the, so you build all these packages, do you actually then use them to, like, let's say you built the C library, do you actually install that C library? Uh, we did the, the test and it works, but uh, we need to uh, test it widely and we are not running the test and so on. So it is really something that we, do, we have to do next, testing the quality of the binary that we generate. But yeah, it is really the next step. But I'm not afraid for Intel CPU, it will be easy for the MIPS, uh, Power PC, S, uh, 390, and etc. All the architecture that we've got into Zebian, it is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> but hopefully, I won't be the one doing it. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much, Sylvester. Thank you.